Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today I have a disassembly and maintenance of this. This is the, uh, hold on, <laughs> this is the Gonzo FH11CF, which is, well, carbon fiber. I've already filmed the unboxing, do check out my channel to watch that unboxing. And, well, I, I just want to say again, that just how impressed I am with this knife. It's not the fit and finish, although the fit and finish seems to be okay, It is, uh, except for it has a lot of sharp edges. It's not the pocket clip, which is nice and deep carry, but it has very uh, shallow screws, so they don't get into the way of the pocket. But it is this action. This action is just like, boom, weak detent, but the smoothness of the pivot is like, look at that. It's like no pressure at all, minimal shake, and it'll close down. A kind of action I've only seen in Grinsmo knives and Shirogorov knives and uh, zero tolerances. But today I want to see if I can push the boundaries and see if I can make this knife even more, uh, e even more, uh, even more, even smoother, if that's even possible. All right. First things first. Let's take it off. Uh, let's uh, disassemble it. Now I do have one other Ganzo knife. That knife is a nightmare to disassemble. It's one of those G series. It's the G seven five four two, and uh, it's just a nightmare to take apart. Okay, first things first, I've noticed that these screws are actually deeper than uh, the other Gonzo, so it looks like they have improved their screws. It doesn't seem to be free spinning. There is no Loctite as well, which is great. It means that they are okay with uh, people taking the knives apart. There's no red Loctite, which is a problem with these budget knives. And also the screws are quite long, it's relatively long. Compared to my Roy screws, the screws are about maybe 70% the length. And the problem with that is that if the screws are too short, you don't have a lot of space to, to adjust the pivot. So that's good. That's the eight there. We got some T6 screws in the back here. Okay, this one goes into the back spacer. Alright. So far, so good. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Now, because this is the first time I'm taking it apart, I'm going to separate the screws just to make sure that at least these back screws are the same length, uh, but I don't want to mix them up. Yeah, they look like they're about the same length. And now let's see if the knife falls apart. Alright, so we have here the lanyard tube. We have the stock pin. What looks like a free spinning pivot. Alright, well, that was a lot easier than my other Gonzo, which is of course an access lock, which is never easy in the first place. And as you can see here, we have confirmed uh, stainless steel bearings with a lot of gunk in it. Sorry, we have stainless steel bearings with a lot of gunk in it. So as good as the action is now, I have a strong feeling that it's going to get even better. And check that out, we even have a, oh no, there's just some grease. I thought that was a dead ball ramp, but yeah. Alright, let's uh, Let's start cleaning it up. Stop pin right here. Let's take out the other detent. Alright. So, yeah. Sometimes with all these uh, cheaper Chinese knife brands, sometimes their fit and finish or, or their ability to uh, disassemble is going to be uh, well reduced because they have things like Loctite and all that. Uh, fit and finish issues. Sometimes there's problems with... Uh, uh, using a lot of shortcuts to make sure that the action is great, you know, like bushers and all that. But this one looks pretty good. I mean, I can't really complain. We have nested liners, as you can see, full stainless steel liners. Uh, it's not skeletonized, uh, which would have been nice, would have made it a bit lighter, but in itself, it's not a heavy knife in the first place. This is the uh, lanyard hole right there. Put that there. So, just gonna wipe this down. So, Come on, okay, so a lot of you are, might ask like why would you want to disassemble your knife, especially when it comes out of the factory this smooth. Well, as you can see here, there's a lot of gunk that is in the knife, right? Sometimes the factory uses grease, sometimes the factory is a bit dusty or a bit dirty and when we make sure that we clean our knives, not only does it function in the correct way or in the way that it's, it works best or the way that we're happy with, another advantage of that is that well, you kind of reduce a variable. So if a knife like this one comes out of the factory really dirty and another Gunzo comes out of the factory really clean, then that's not the variable that I need to think about and I need to put into factor when I do the review. And this just like, this just ensures that, well, I make the reviews as, uh, 
as non-variable as possible which is always a mark of objectivity all right that was easy that was clean uh, i don't think i need to use any alcohol wipes for this one because at the end of the day it's still factory fresh all right so i guess let's just put it back together this goes in here we're going to put a little bit of oil Okay, uh, notice some yellow spots here, which I'm just going to wipe down. This is a microfiber cloth, by the way. Alright, let's start reassembling the knife and see if we can do anything about this action. Now, with any knife, whether it's bearings or washers, over time, uh, you will get even smoother. And as you can see here, I have witnessed the first sin of this knife. Uh, this knife uses a free spinning pivot. Now, the good thing is that uh, the pivot uh, actually doesn't unscrew like it's you have some free spinning pivots when you unscrew it both sides will spin especially if it's locked tighted in this case all I had to do is put my finger down and I could unscrew it out which is great but it's probably because it didn't include or didn't use any lock tight at all uh, another thing I want to check is that some knives uh, if you don't if the tolerances are good enough you can assemble the knife without using loctite and the screws will still stay in uh, sometimes um, it needs a bit of loctite because you know it, kind of make sure the screws doesn't unscrew itself through vibration and through constant flipping which is what I do on a daily basis so for this one uh, I'm just gonna put that uh, I'm just gonna do it without any any uh, whatchamacallit any uh, any Loctite sorry if you guys must know it is 11 p.m. at night tonight long days work I'm gonna stumble over my words now if it's a new knife uh, I like to Add a bit of oil throughout all the metal parts right here. It's just to promote a bit of uh, rust resistance because I do live in Malaysia, a country where it is definitely hot and wet all the time and I sweat a lot. So this is just to ensure that... Oh, and this is just to ensure that um, we reduce the amount of corrosion possibility as much as possible. Especially when it comes to a D2 blade, which is not the most corrosion resistant blade. Some would say I am over lubing this knife, but more lube is better than no lube. Right. Now I just gotta figure out which one is the stop pin and which one is the uh, the lanyard tube. Okay, they both seem to be the exact same length. And another problem here is that the uh, it doesn't seem to be bolstered. So some knives, like there's a little bit of a bolster here so that when you put it in, it kind of sits in a little bit better. In this case, well, no. But it's okay, these metal bits are thick enough that it kind of seats in anyway. And uh, that should be the right way. Next up, let's put the blade in. Oops. And what the hell am I doing? This is when you guys know that it's late at night after a long day's work. Right, that's in. Let's loop this up. I've already looped the detent ball. So it should help make the detent even uh even uh more slippery okay so I'm just gonna put this out because right now the lock bar is kind of pushing up against the blade making it difficult to align up everything right so far so good now we put oops now we put this in and let's hope everything just slots in like that Alright, then this goes in here. And of course, if all the screws start unscrewing, then I know that I need to add a bit of lock tight to all the screws to make sure that everything uh, stays put. Now, when you use lock tight, make sure you use the blue or the medium strength lock tight. Do not use the red lock tight, you're gonna have a headache later. good switching over to t6 
Now a lot of people don't really feel the need to disassemble and maintain the knives because well you think it's a knife is a tool and hence if you need to if you need tools to maintain your tools then maybe your tools are not the best tools for you. In some way uh, I disagree with that. I think that everything in life works better if you take care of it. Even the things you use to take care of other stuff. Kind of like if you need to vacuum a vacuum cleaner to keep it clean. But nonetheless I just like having my knives working at its most optimum levels. Some of you may know that I also play paintball. So same thing. Hold on, this is not going in properly. There you go. No, this is not going in properly. What is happening here? Is it not lined up? Yeah, it is. And there we go, it's going in. Yeah, I just thought that maybe the screws are not straight. Alright. Okay, everything's tight and the screws feel good. You know, the, the first Gonzo I have, the screws feel a bit shallow. They kind of have stripped out a little bit. So I'm very happy that this one's the, uh, the pivots, all the screws and everything feel good. Okay, so now that we know it's flipping correctly. Okay, uh, let's just see if we can uh, check for blade play. No blade play at all. No up and down blade play. See if we can back this up a little bit. Get it even smoother. Alright, that's smooth. Still no blade play. So you can back this up even more. Super smooth. Centering is still good. Any play? Okay, there is just the slightest amount of play. Let's tighten this up just a little bit. Right, centered, no play, drop shoddy. Wow. So I learned something from this. Uh, wipe out the grease and add some oil and the knife that you think has amazing action has an even more amazing action. Alright guys, so uh, just comment down below if you've ever owned a Gonzo. Sorry about the cut just now, my camera battery ran out and I had to switch up batteries. Uh, just, yeah, just comment down below if you've ever owned a Gonzo and you have any experience with uh, action this great because I can't believe this comes out of a knife that is just 25 USD or about 150 ringgit. And yeah, so guys, thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and of course, stay ready.